Hi, in this video we'll be using some of the most used mathematical functions. Some of them are defined in the math module, which we have to import, but let's start with the built-in ones. First we have the abs function. It returns the absolute value of a number. The absolute value may be understood as a distance from a point. So here we have a short program where we define two points, these are tuples, and the first element in the tuple is the x-coordinate, the second element is the y-coordinate. As we can see, the y-coordinates are equal to zero, which means these two points are situated on the x-line. And then we calculate the distance from zero. The distance from zero means the distance from the center of the coordinate system. We're using the ABS function to calculate the absolute value and we are passing the x coordinates of the two points to calculate the distance. So here we have the absolute value of 3, which is 3, and here we have the absolute value of negative 5, which is 5, because absolute values are always positive. And here we print the results. So let's run this code. Point 1 is 3 units away from the center, point 2 is 5 units away from the center. So it works as expected. Then we have the max and min functions, which return the greatest and the smallest of the arguments respectively. Here we have a worker's dictionary, in which the keys are strings, or names, and the values are integers, these are ages. So Daniel Smith is 57 years old, and so on. And now we want to find the maximum and the minimum age. So we have to search in the values only. And that's why we're using the values method. Workers values returns just the values from this dictionary. And we need the maximum value and the minimum value. And we assign these to oldest and youngest. And then we can print the result. The oldest worker is, here we're using the oldest variable, and the youngest only, and here we use the youngest variable, years old. So let's run this code. The oldest worker is 57, the youngest only 48 years old. As we can see, it's true. 57, this is the maximum value. 48, this is the minimum value. The next function, round, is used to round numbers. Here we have a very short program. Here we have the distance variable equal to 8.4632, this is a float, and we want to round this number to one decimal place. So we use this function, round, with two arguments, the variable and the precision, one decimal place. So we use this in the placeholder in the formatted text. So the result is the distance is about 8.5 kilometers. As we can see, 8.5 is to what this number should be rounded if one decimal place is needed. Well, I also have a quick tip video on rounding numbers. So feel free to watch it if you want to learn more about round function. Now the following functions are available in the math module, so we have to import them. From math, import all. And the first two functions are sitting on the floor. They return integers. The seal of x function returns the smallest integer, not less than x, whereas the floor of x function returns the largest integer, not greater than x. Here we have an example. First, we're defining four values. Then we're finding the maximum value and the minimum value. As we can see, this is the minimum value and this is the maximum value. As you can see, these values oscillate between the minimum value and the maximum value. But we don't have to be that precise. We can approximate the minimum value to 3 and the maximum value to 4. To do that, we can use the floor function and the sale function. So here we'll use the sale function because we need the ceiling, the integer which is just above this value. This is 4. 
and here we'll use the floor function because we need the integer which is just below this value, which is 3. So the value oscillates between about, about because this is approximation. We need the integers, not the exact values. So floor of min value and sale of max value. Now let's run this code. The value oscillates between about 3 and 4. OK. The next function is POW, P-O-W. It works pretty much like the exponentiation operator, but it returns a float. It's also defined in the math module, so we have to import it. From math, import all. And now first, let's use the exponentiation operator to see the difference. 2 to the power of 12 equals 4096. This is an integer. If we use the POW function with these two arguments, 2 and 12, we get the same result, but this time it's a float. Well, there is no difference with floats. So 25 to the power of 0 0.5 equals 5. And POW with these two arguments, 25 and 0 0.5 equals 5. This time we get floats here and here. Then we have the exponential function exp, which returns e to the power of x, where e is the Euler's number, equal to 2.71828 and so on. Now, here we have a short example. First, we're using the range function to generate numbers from 0 to 4. Then, we're using the for loop to loop over these numbers and to raise e, the Euler's number, to the power of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we're using the exponents stored in this variable. And here we have a formatted string to print it out. And now let's run this code. And as we can see, e to the power of 0 equals 1, e to the power of 1 equals 2.71 and so on. So this is actually the Euler's number. And then we have e to the power of 2, e to the power of 3, and e to the power of 4. The next function is sqrt. The sqrt function returns the square root of x. x cannot be a negative number or we'll get an error. So here's an example. So now inside the for loop we want to print the square root of each of the numbers from this range. So we're using the sqrt function to do that. And here we have a formatted string, the square root of, here we have the number, is, and here we have the square root of this number. So let's run this code. And here's the result. The square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 10 is 3.16 and so on. And here we have all the square roots, up to 100. The square root of 100 is 10. This function works pretty much the same as the exponentiation operator with a fractional operand on the right. So let's compare 49 to the power of 0 0.5 equals 7. And now let's use the sqrt function. What we need is we have to import this function from the math module. So from math import all. And now we can use the sqrt function and pass 49 as the argument. And the result is the same, 7. Then we have the log and log 10 functions. The log and log 10 functions return the natural logarithm and the logarithm in base 10 of a number, respectively. A natural logarithm is a logarithm in base e, Euler's number. The Euler's number is available in the math module. So in our program here, we have a list of numbers, which contains three numbers, 0 0.001, the Euler's number, and 1000. And now we want to print the natural logarithms of these three numbers, and then the logarithms in base 10 of these three numbers. That program is very straightforward. We're just using the for loop here and here to print the natural logarithms and the logarithms in base 10 of these three numbers. So let's run this program now. 
natural logarithms. Here we have the natural logarithms. As we can see, the natural logarithm of the Euler's number is 1, which is quite obvious. Then we have the logarithms in base 10. So the logarithm in base 10 of 1 thousandth or 0 0.001 is negative 3 because 10 to the power of negative 3 equals 1 thousandth and the logarithm in base 10 of 1000 is 3. So this is quite simple. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.